There is. I'm talking about an unmitigated, disastrous meltdown that has been taking place at Florida over the course of the weekend. Now, the biggest bold print headline is that the quarterback, Jane Rashada, chose Miami over Florida, and we'll get to there on that in a moment. But in a roundabout way, in terms of the thing that's kind of gotten Florida fans acting the most hysterical, and if you're a UGA fan, all you can do is sort of stop and just kind of enjoy this. Like the stuff that's actually gotten the, the, the Florida fans the most worked up would not really seem to be as related to Rashada as it is related to some other recruits that Florida's kind of been in pursuit of who kind of seemingly all started drifting away from Florida like right at the same time. Like there's a guy named Peyton Kirkland who may be going to Mississippi, um, I should say Michigan State. Uh, there's Trayon Webb, kind of a running back type guy who looks like he may be going to Penn State. You had a guy that visited Florida and then right on the heels of the Florida visit committed to Florida State just like right away, like a couple of minutes after seemingly the Florida visit was done. And a lot of the promised like activity of being aggressive in terms of bringing in transfer players – a lot of this has just not happened for Florida, and I like to kind of visit not just Georgia message boards, but opposing team message boards there as well, because I do like the drama that kind of comes with message board culture. And if you've been following Florida fans on social media, or if you've been visiting any Gator message boards, you have seen, I mean, it is not you know too strong of a phrase to say a total meltdown around all of this, which led to the relatively unprecedented step over the weekend of uh, Florida coach Billy Napier having to pen an open letter to Florida fans. And if you want to know how bad things are for your program, is your coach having to do an open letter to the fans? Uh, That's when you know things are not going well. The end of this letter was, uh, you're part of this team. We can't wait to see the swamp this fall as we embark on the journey to our new future. Go Gators. And you see the, the Billy Napier signature right there on all of that. I mean, it is just a messy situation at Florida that led to this letter even having to be written the fact that florida fans are just disappointed that napier who is you know legitimately building up the 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 recruiting staff more so than dan mullen had it but it's not really showing much in the way uh, of results at all and kind of all of that goes down there now all of this was the precursor to what happens with Jaden rashada so Jaden rashada is big time quarterback out of california at one point in time, was thought to be heavily involved with Florida. But as we've told you in the show here over the course of the uh, last few weeks, that seemingly he has been kind of trending away from Florida. For a little while, it seemed like Texas A&M might get involved. Then Miami got heavily involved. Well, over the course of the weekend, Rashada committed to uh, committed to Miami. Now, listen, there is a big, big Uh, report out there from on three that the financial considerations for Rashad over choosing Miami somewhere in the neighborhood of like nine point something million dollars and supposedly Florida offered him like 11 million dollars but he wanted to be at uh he wanted to be at Miami so he chose less money to go there There there's a big story at on three about that quoting the same lawyer that's been connected to like the the Nico Amaliva stuff and things like that but also in the midst of that story there was a pretty damning claim on the part of, is, is it Mike Caspino? Is that, is that his first name? Mike Caspino is the attorney that represents uh, Rashada. So here's the quote that got a lot of attention from on three about the Florida NIL collective trying to step up and make a com- competitive offer that would get Rashada to choose Florida over Miami. So what Caspino says is that Florida's the most dysfunctional collective in all of college football. Uh, He says, I plan on steering my clients away from them. From my standpoint, I never want to deal with them again. He says, if it wasn't for the collective at Florida being completely dysfunctional, that uh, Rashada may have very well ended up at Florida, but essentially went there because uh, of how dysfunctional the Florida collective is. Now, this got the Gator Collective responding on social media there as well. All of this playing out in the last 24 hours. They fire back through an official statement at Caspino saying, the recent comments by California law- lawyer Michael Caspino have been brought to our attention. Gator Collective has never had any communication with Mr. Caspino about Jaden Rashada or any other recruits. Rather, Gator Collective has refused to engage in any dialogue with Mr. Caspino on numerous occasions as Gator Collective does not approve 
of his tactics and has no interest in engaging in activities which violate Florida law and NCAA interim policy that may put athletes eligibility at risk. So the Gator Collective fires back on all this. Now, since then, on Twitter, Caspino has kind of fired back again and basically called them, you know, spoiled millennials or whatever it was that he said. He used the phrase millennial in, in describing uh, the people that run the uh, Gator Collective. And on the other side of this, you got John Ruiz, who is the famous Miami booster, who has been in the center of so many different NIL claims. Well, he comes out on Twitter and says, the report by On3.com is inaccurate as it relates to Jaden Rashada. I've never spoken to Mr. Caspino about Jaden Rashada. Mr. Caspino and I have spoken on an unrelated player months ago and had a very professional and pleasant conversation. I respect him. Here's my thing about John Ruiz, the very famous Miami booster. Like how many times do you have to go public and say, oh, the thing that's been reported about me is not true? At a certain point in time, if you're having to deny a bunch of claims about yourself, you may have a different series of problems. But if you're a Georgia fan on all of this, you just get to sit back and watch what appears to be an absolute total meltdown on the part of the Gators. Billy Napier writing uh, uh, letters to fans, telling them to calm down, basically. And then, you know, famous attorney connected to big-time recruit, basically talking about a, you know, uh, disorganized Gator collective and Florida fans just kind of cringing through the entire thing. It has rarely been better to be a Georgia fan than it is right now. Reigning national champs, that feels good. But also watching your rivals, Auburn earlier this offseason, Florida now, go through the disaster they're going through. Uh, what a time to be a dog fan and watch soap operas like this play out. That is Around the Dog House. It's presented today by our friends at AAA. And, of course, you think about uh, AAA for legendary roadside assistance when I'm traveling this time of year. I love that. But you can also get discounts with your insurance through AAA there as well, including the AAA drive discount. You can improve your driving skills and save money on all your auto insurance with free AAA mobile app feature. You can call 833-718-2075 to find a branch near you. That's 833 718 075 to find a branch near you and find out all the ways which AAA can save for you when it comes to your uh, uh, auto insurance and all the other cool stuff going on there. Of course, quick disclaimer, the coverage is subject to all policy terms, conditions, exclusions, and limitations, and subject to underwriting requirements. Insurance underwritten by member select insurance group. Uh, AAA drive participation is optional, subject to terms, conditions, availability. AAA drive auto insurance discount. It's not available in all states. Download mobile app activation of AAA drive and the ability to record journeys are uh, required to receive the discount. Savings may vary based on uh, driving behavior. Discounts apply to select covers only. And they're not applied to statutory uh, assessments and fixed uh, expense fees. Discounts may vary by state. Please refer to the terms and conditions more information determine participation availability check your phone's eligibility at google play or the app store by texting mobile app 99513 i think you get the point here uh so check that out today 833-718-2075 and you can learn a lot more about that with that said a lot going on around uga kirby likes his quarterbacks dog fans like to see the meltdown happening at florida everything else related to uga let's do it right now with our buddy john stinchcomb here on dog nation daily presented by pella window and door of georgia here today From Athens and across the SEC or wherever the recruiting trail may lead, here's a DogNation.com insider. Say hello to John Stinchcomb. Always great to have him as a part of Dog Nation Daily, presented by Pella Window Indoor of Georgia on a uh, day like this. And uh, John, hope you had a nice weekend. Hope you're enjoying a great summer. And I'm sure you're like me when you hear stories about Billy Napier, the Florida coach, having to calm down his fans or you know outspoken lawyers talking about you know florida's inability to participate in nil right now seeing that kind of just turmoil for a for a uga rival especially the lousy stinking gators uh, i gotta tell you that's pretty enjoyable for me and i'm sure you kind of feel the same way no oh, yeah the first thing i do is get a good chuckle out of the fact that uh, florida seems to be struggling so mightily on the uh, recruiting slash nil recruitment trail uh it, it also makes me just to sit back and Marvel at the fact that so many folks have discretionary funds that they can throw millions of dollars uh, to try to recruit players into their their college team. So once you start involving agents and, uh, you know, he said, she said with the collectives and millions of dollars on the table, it, it just seems so far from where we were, you know, what, three years ago and uh, college athletics and the fight for amateurism, which has become, you know, more of a, a, a laughing punchline than uh factuality because yeah. as we can see i mean you, you look at nico's deal in tennessee and uh what happened uh with texas a&m and the kerfuffle between them and alabama and, and it has everything to do with 
you know, millions of dollars to transpiring and, and, and changing hands for the recruitment of, of high school players. So much different landscape, but it's always enjoyable when we see uh, Florida struggle. So it was, uh, it's made for some, some good reads. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about it. I think there are two things going on here. It's a representation of kind of the current landscape of college football, but also kind of a interesting subplot involving a Georgia rival here too. And on that part of it, for, for another moment, John, what I find kind of fascinating is, you know, you and I are both old enough to remember when like Florida State in the 90s was like probably the top shelf program in the entire sport. They were top five seemingly every year, year after year after year, won a couple of national championships. This was as good a program as you could be back then. And here we are now in 2022, and all of that truly does seem like ancient history, and I guess in one respect it almost is ancient history, but it's been a long time since Florida State has really kind of reminded you of that great Bobby Bowden era. You know, obviously Jimbo Fisher had a little bit of a blip there, but but it's just been a lot of years that has not been true. And, you know, this is one of those things where honesty compels me to admit, and this is not just me saying this because I'd like for it to be true. I mean, I just think it's an accurate reading of the situation. If you're Florida, you got to be really, really careful here. You know, the Will Muschamp era did not work out. Your next coach, Jim McElwain, that didn't work out. The Dan Mullen era didn't work out. All of a sudden, now you've pinned your hopes on a very inexperienced group of five-level head coach prior to coming to you, and you hope that he's going to be the transformational figure that you, that you need. Well, what if he's not? And right now, he's certainly gotten off to a very slow start in terms of recruiting and everything else, and the 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 inexperience seems to be showing here a bit. I think he shot off his mouth a little bit about what he was going to be able to do quickly and maybe uh, overestimated his ability to do that. But if you're floored, and this is not just me as a Georgia fan kind of poking here, this is, I think, the truth. You better be very careful that you don't fail with another head coach because at that point in time, that's just putting whatever your glory years are, you know, the Tim Tebow, Urban Meyer, Steve Spurrier era, that's just pushing that more and more into the distant past where all of a sudden you have to have a good bit of gray in your hair to have any real memory of that whatsoever. Florida's in a kind of a precarious spot for its program right now, I would say. And once again, if you're a Georgia fan, I certainly hope they fall flat on their face and fail. Mm -hmm. But just because I want it to be true doesn't mean it won't be true. I, I think you can see cycles in football and across programs. And you've seen programs that had their era and, and have struggled down through a valley and are fighting their way back. And you know, I, I agree wholeheartedly with the assessment of Florida. I say Auburn is, is right there behind them in that curve in that uh, you better you better do something quick or else you know it, it's hard to regain that momentum I, I think florida still has uh national recruitability but you got to prove it and you and, and the greatest recruiter is winning or has been until you start throwing millions of dollars around but i i agree in the assessment that you start stringing a couple of coaching hires that don't pan out for you whether they're good coaches or not and, and your program can really struggle. I think Tennessee is in the middle of that and trying to recover uh, with, with some, some down years. And uh, Florida seems to be right at that same place as, as Tennessee has been maybe a few years ago. And, and on the national landscape, you could point to the same thing, the, the dominance that Nebraska had at one time or USC where um, they were nationally relevant and, and have slipped further from that in, in subsequent years. And Florida is right in that cusp of uh, you better do something or else you're stringing together these tenures that have not produced and you, you fall off the, or outside of the scope of, of that national spotlight. 